Good morning. In this video, I'm going to share with you the 10 biggest career lessons I learned from working two years at Google, first as a technical solutions engineer and then as a software engineer. And these are things from raises to being a good software engineer, getting promo, just general corporate girly advice. Obviously not just for the corporate girlies, but for everyone in general, I really wish that somebody told me all of this stuff when I was starting out my career. So hopefully you find this video helpful. Let me know below which tip was your favorite or maybe you disagree with some of them. Also, we're gonna take Puglo here for a walk because I'm taking care of my friend's dog. So we're gonna try a different kind of video where it's partially a vlog and partially talking. So he wants to go for a walk now, let's go. <sighs> Very hard lesson I learned is that not everyone is your friend. HR, especially, is built for the company and not built for you. Keep your private, see private, and don't tell everyone everything. Even though I love my coworkers at Google so much, I really started to be more private in everything I share because I already share my life on the internet. But for example, there's somebody that reported me to HR for sharing code online, even though it was fake code and it wasn't even Google code or telling my manager where I'm working from, even though we have remote work weeks at Google and I wasn't doing anything against HR policy. It's just unnecessary information that makes them question you for no reason. So keep as much information to yourself as possible. I'm the kind of person that wants to be friends with everyone and loves everyone and overshares. I'm a chronic overshare, but in the corporate world, I learned that not everyone is your friend and you should share as little as possible because that is in your best interest. I hope this helps somebody who's also perhaps an oversharer. On that same note, your manager also doesn't always have your best interests. You need to fight for your raises, fight for a position that you wanna change. For example, for me, it was really hard to switch from a technical solution engineer role to a software engineer role. And that was mainly because my manager really wanted to keep me on the team. Okay, let's go outside. Next thing I learned is that nobody really cares that much. When you wake up and you have Monday morning blues or anxiety about starting your job because you didn't finish that PR or you're late on some kind of project or the document doesn't open or whatever it is that you're worried about at your corporate job, I guarantee you it really does not matter. I was even worried about quitting my job and I procrastinated it for so long because I was worried that my team that I had just switched to less than seven months in, I would tell them that I'm quitting and I had so much anxiety about it. But guess what? They were perfectly fine without me and nobody really cares. Everybody was happy for me. Everyone I said goodbye to was like really happy that I'm, you know, moving on to something better. In the grand scheme of things, Nobody really cares what you're doing as long as you're mainly doing your work. Don't have so much anxiety or maybe I'm just a super anxious person or I was while I was in the corporate world. But yeah, nobody really cares that much. Relax. It's all good. Now, the absolute biggest lesson I learned at Google is how to be a great software engineer. Honestly, if you wanna become a really good engineer, you have to work at one of the big fangs or a really, really good company because the startups, the, the non-tech companies, they don't know how to do things right. And Google, above all places, is a do things right, not do things fast workplace. So what I mean by that is you have to write really good tests, unit tests, integration tests, all of the tests under the sun, like absolutely everything. You have to have really good readability. You have to work for your C++ readability, your, your readability in every single language. And it's valued, like you are valued for caring for your code and being a good engineer. Whereas all the places I worked for before Google, you know, I had several, four or five software engineering jobs. And for most of them, we could get YOLO, whatever we wanted to. We were our own QA, like I was my own QA most of the time. Uh, we barely had any tests and if we did have tests, they were so bad that you may as well not have had tests. So I'm so grateful to have learned how to actually be a good software engineer. And above everything, that is why I would recommend working at Google if you want to learn how things are done right. If you want to be an engineer, like Google is the place to go because they do everything too correctly to the point where it slows things down a lot. So that's the one thing I also learned is that there's a balance you need to have between doing things 
right and being a perfectionist because I found that in the last year, I created an entire product. Like I had so much impact at the startup that I was working for. I feel like I had way more impact than, you know, the few features that I built here and there as an individual contributor at Google. So as an individual contributor at a big tech company, you typically don't have that much impact. Your work doesn't have a lot of visibility. You know, I was a low level contributor anyway, but you have to be a really high impact performer and probably even like not an individual contributor to have your work actually have impact. I mean, my code literally did impact hundreds of millions of people because, you know, I was working on Gmail, but in reality, you don't really see the impact of that and it feels like you're working so slowly. And a big part of that is this do things right mentality. So it's kind of a double-edged sword in that sense. But at the same time, I learned so many amazing skills as a software engineer that I can now take to a startup, to my own business. And that was the entire point. So now I know how to write immaculate test cases with coverage for failures and successes and everything under the sun. I learned so much about good coding practices and infra practices. I can make separate videos about what those are, but all of this helped me become a much better software engineer and have much better practices in general. So another Another thing that I took from Google into the real world is being very careful about cybersecurity and using hardware security keys like Yubico, which is the sponsor of this video. So I used to use YubiKeys every day when I worked at Google. I'm pretty sure everybody is mandated to, like you have to for security. And now I even use it for my personal life just to be extra safe because ever since my TikTok got hacked, I've been extra paranoid and careful about online security. So basically it's a trusty USB key that gives me two-factor authentication across all of my email apps and logins with just a tap. I can just plug it into any device and voila, instantly shielded from hackers and sketchy websites. So if you want to check out YubiKey, it's in the description below. It's trusted by so many people at so many big tech companies. And I know a lot of you already know and love them, but if you don't know them, check out the link in the description. It's honestly better safe than sorry nowadays, as I have learned the hard way. Another huge thing I learned at Google where there's all these amazing smart engineers and smart people and everybody's incredibly hardworking, smart, high achievers. Did I mention smart? Literally everybody has imposter syndrome. I talked to my managers, my tech leads, my mentors, everyone at Google that I've ever spoken to has told me that they have imposter syndrome. So then it's actually quite funny because you see all these high achievers and all these top performers that give you imposter syndrome, but at the same time, you're actually giving them imposter syndrome too, because they see you as a top performer, as a, as a very smart and capable person. So I really learned to not underestimate myself. And I learned that a lot of people actually don't know what they're doing all that much. I, everybody's pretending in the corporate world. I mean, there are some super smart people, like don't get me wrong, everybody there is extremely smart and talented, but at the same time, they don't know everything. We have this idea that people that work in higher up positions at Google or at big tech companies know everything about everything, and it's totally false. You know, they're very good at being resourceful and gathering information, and they are incredibly talented and have very good foundational knowledge that they work on, but they're not gods. I mean, some of them are really software engineering gods, but you know, that's the 1%. Everyone else has imposter syndrome, doesn't always feel confident in their skills. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't either. I feel like Google really helped me understand that I am actually extremely capable and technical and, you know, really helped me get over this hump that I had thinking that I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough. And especially in my technical solutions engineer role, I was working with a lot of developers from other companies, like huge tech companies. All of the big tech companies that run the world are on Google Cloud, like so many of them. So many that you know and love. And the developers there, I really had to tell them, hey, read the docs. Hey, this is how HTTP works. Hey, like very simple, basic things. And it's just funny because you would assume that everybody knows what they're doing. But in reality, no. Not really. Don't underestimate yourself. If they can do it, you can do it too. Everybody was once a fetus who knew nothing and they all learned a set of skills and learned along the way and gained some life experience and got to where they are. So if those people can do it, you can do it too. 
Another thing I learned is to keep a work journal. Honestly, this is such a huge tip that people don't tell you at work enough. I learned this in my first software engineering job because one of my coworkers had this little booklet where he would write all of the bugs he solved, like every day, what he worked on, what he troubleshooted, everything. And it's such a big helper because you're honestly gonna forget. Like I wouldn't be able to make this video about things that I learned at Google if I didn't keep notes of it. So make sure that you do that. That's super important and not necessarily something I learned at Google, but something that I highly recommend for you because when you're a software engineer, especially, you're gonna come across the same bugs, the same types of problems, and you're gonna completely forget how you solve them. So keeping a work diary, absolutely phenomenal. And on that note, another thing I learned is you get sucked into this corporate bubble and it's very hard to realize when you're burnt out. I was actually burnt out for like the majority of the time I was at Google and I didn't really realize it because you're pulled into this world, you're in this corporate world and it feels normal and everything like, like working at 6 p.m. feels normal because you send anybody a direct message and they reply within one minute and everyone is open to helping you at like 8 p.m. I mean, they're really good at communicating, hey, I have to go to dinner, I have to do this, I have to that, but then you become one of those people too. So I would be totally open to working at 8 p.m. or my manager asked me to meet at like 7 p.m. to talk about my promo on a Friday. And at first I thought that kind of stuff was weird, but after a while I just kind of got used to it. I also learned you have to be really cognizant of your own work-life balance and be aware of when you're burnt out. I also learned that you can take a leave of absence. Like I had no idea about this and I couldn't do this because I had to quit my job, like the new job I got said that you have to quit your Google job because it's a bit of a conflict of interest and you have to quit, you can't just take a leave of absence. But if you do feel burnt out, you can take a leave of absence and this is a totally normal thing people do in the corporate world and a lot of people were doing this during COVID because you know I was working there during COVID and I noticed so many people taking so much time off and I thought it was really cool that this is something you can do in the big corporations. Sadly, did not take advantage of this myself, but they did let me work from Europe for six months. They let me work from like multiple places in the world World. It's honestly way more flexible than I thought. If you need time for yourself or you need to, you know, you think you can't work at these big corporations because it's not that flexible. Honestly, it can be really flexible. So that was really cool to learn and to see. And another cool thing I learned is that you can always come back. So if you quit Google, you can come back within a year without having to go through the interview process again. After I gave in my resignation, I had a call with the director and the manager of the director. And both of them said like, hey, look, if you if you want to come back within a year, you don't even have to interview, you can just come back to us. And they were really helpful and nice and awesome. And it kind of gives you this reassurance that like, Whew, even if I made the wrong choice, I can still go back. Also keep in mind that if you're by any chance thinking of quitting your corporate job, there's always the possibility of going back. I mean, now with the economy being as different as it is, I don't know how easy it is, but I just know it's a possibility and that within a year, you don't have to interview anymore. All right, well, that's it guys. I hope you found this video useful. I would love to hear your biggest career lessons below because you know these are just some of mine. I could probably make a part two, three, and 14 because I have so many things that I've learned and maybe I'll do that. But yeah, if you found this video helpful, I would super appreciate if you give it a like, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.